A tornado touched down in Wayne, Oklahoma this morning, leaving behind damage to trees and homes and canceling school in the area. And severe storm system that caused the destruction could impact us here in Arkansas. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm McKaylin Johnson and we'll waste no time getting straight over to meteorologist Scott Covert for the latest on what we can expect today. Scott, well, that's exactly right. McKaylin that line of thunderstorms off to our west now pushing into parts of western Oklahoma. This is the same system that resulted in those tornadoes in central Oklahoma as well as around the Dallas Metroplex just earlier this morning. Now I'll tell you as of right now here at the noon hour, nothing severe in the natural state. That's some good news. The severe weather potential though will continue into this afternoon into this evening. This specific storm just to the west of Mena has had rotation. In fact, it had a confirmed tornado just about 30 minutes ago. That's going to be McCurtain County, Oklahoma. So no immediate threat to Polk or Mena, uh, but we do want to be mindful of that cell. We're going to keep watching it pretty closely into the metro. We do have some showers moving through here this afternoon. Benton, North Little Rock, Conway. You're seeing some of those some more scattered in nature downpours. Expect that on and off throughout the course of the day. We do have one tornado watch. This is going to be an effect for southwestern Arkansas, Hope, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Mena, and Dequeen. You're in that watch until 5 o'clock tonight. I would suspect it's a good bet that we'll see additional watches, both tornado and severe thunderstorm, for a good majority of southern Arkansas going into this afternoon into this evening. Temperatures will warm up a few more degrees to about 64. Many of us are going to see heavy downpours, frequent lightning and thunder, and some severe weather throughout the course of the day. I'm timing it out and going over the very, very latest hazards coming right up. Thanks, Scott. Now some positive news today at noon for your family's finances. The Labor Department's latest report shows that inflation might be finally slowing down across the board. According to the report, U.S. inflation slowed to 7.1% last month, down from 7.7% in October and more than 9% over the summer months. President Joe Biden said this morning that the slowing inflation means Americans are seeing lower prices for gas, cars and toys, which will give families quote a little breathing room during the holiday season. Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better headed in the right direction. The stock market soared this morning after the report was announced and the National Retail Federation says they're still expecting holiday sales to jump 8% from last year. President Biden is set to sign the Respect for Marriage Act into law today, which safeguards same sex and interracial marriages. The signing will mark the culmination of a bipartisan effort sparked by the Supreme Court's decision in June to overturn Roe v. Wade. Lawmakers from both parties will be at today's signing at the White House, along with the owner of Club Q, a gay nightclub in Colorado where five people were killed in a shooting last month and two survivors of the shooting as well. Mississippi State head football coach Mike Leach passed away last night after suffering complications from a heart condition. In a statement, the Leach family said, quote, We are supported and uplifted by the outpouring of love and prayers from family, friends, Mississippi State University, the hospital staff, and football fans around the world, end quote. One of the most successful coaches in the history of college football, Leach was finishing his third season in Starkville and 21st as head coach. He was 61 years old. The flu continues to spread at a rapid pace across Arkansas, putting people in the hospital and putting a strain on local doctor's offices and pharmacies. Kavanaugh Pharmacy owner Ann Pace says there's, they're just trying to keep up with not only the flu, but also COVID and RSV with managing all they do and helping people get better. A shortage of medicines isn't making that any easier. We have no liquid ibuprofen. We don't have much of liquid Tylenol. Um, so for those kids, that, that don't feel good, have fevers, it's hard to get that medication. And so trying to keep stocked as best as we possibly can has been a real challenge. I just feel like every day it's what's the new shortage and how are we gonna best deal with that? It's a lot of things we're managing, plus we're still giving flu shots. Doctors say the best shield against the flu is a flu shot, and it's still not too late in the season to get one. As of Monday, there are 235 people hospitalized with the flu in Arkansas, 45 of those in the ICU, and we're not the only state getting hit hard. Braden Ross reports from Wisconsin, where hospitals are in a tough spot. We are really getting overrun 
Today, an unusual message from Madison Area Hospitals asking some people not to come. In a joint statement, five Madison Area health systems said wait times in emergency rooms and urgent cares are skyrocketing thanks to rising numbers of the flu, COVID, and RSV. Everybody's getting you know, overwhelmed with these upper respiratory infections and asking people to, to, to use some maybe different thought processes on how they seek care. They're asking people to monitor and treat their symptoms at home if they can, but this new guidance may have some employees wondering how they can prove they're sick to take time off. Any employer who's uh, requiring an employee to provide a doctor's note really should take stock of just how strained those resources are now. Employment attorney Colin Good says during the peak of the pandemic, employers had more options. What changed, though, with the pandemic is that employers had a lot more tools at their disposal when employees were off work. Under COVID policies, employees had more leeway to stay home when they were sick. But now we're kind of in a hybrid space, right? The pandemic is still going on. Good says employees should know what their employer requires and also what the law says. Dr. David Ottenbaker with SSM Health says those who need doctor's notes can also use telehealth options to avoid wait times. You know, if people want to be seen or, or if it's something uh, as an employee kind of where they have to get a, a note, you know, we have that SSM Express virtual care, which is again a nice alternative where they don't have to be seen in person. If you're high risk or immunocompromised, healthcare providers say you should still seek care in person. The Sherwood Police Department is investigating a hit and run. Officers say a pedestrian was hit by a car Friday night around 9 p.m. near the intersection of Keel and Indian Head. The front passenger side of the vehicle could possibly have damage. All authorities are still searching for the driver and THB 11's Jalissa Garza is speaking with the victim's family today. She'll have more tonight on THB 11 News at 5. A criminal case leads to sentencing in, an, in a years long hit and run investigation. Cecil Farrell will serve 10 years for the wreck that killed Sherwood bicyclist John Mundell in 2019. Farrell took a plea deal yesterday that led to this sentence far less than the 42 years he could have faced. Today's cars are safer than ever, but one group is pushing automakers to make them even safer, especially for those not in the driver's seat. For 25 years, crash tests conducted by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety focused on how well vehicles protect people in the front seat. And now those tests include passengers in the back. The most recent tests show that many SUVs on the market don't do a great job protecting backseat riders. Seat belts are a big reason why. Front seats have belts with a tension system that mitigates the force of the crash. The nine SUVs rated poor did not have those same belts in the back seat. Adding this kind of technology in the rear seat could certainly reduce the likelihood of you being severely injured or killed when riding in the rear of the vehicle. The Institute says automakers are aware of the findings and some are already making changes to help keep everyone in the car safe. We first told you last week that people in Benton could soon see hikes on their utility bills each month. THV 11 was there last night for a community meeting where people voiced their concerns, especially for those who won't be able to pay. This is going to hurt those that can't afford to be hurt. Veterans, senior citizens, you know, any, anybody on a fixed income. Benton Utilities previously tried to pass other proposed rate increases in 2016 and 2019, but they failed. If the Benton Councilman were to pass the proposal, then people will see on average $17 more on their bill each month, which equals to about $210 a year. The Benton Commission and City Council will meet next Monday for the second reading of the ordinance. Well, do you believe in miracles? One Arkansan sure does. The once paralyzed Drake Manis is up and walking. But as our Sarah Herbakowitz shows us, the beauty of this story isn't just that he's walking, but who's been walking by his side through it all. This week, high school sweethearts Drake Manis and Sydney Fleepa went on vacation to Arizona. Well, we've been playing golf and visited the Grand Canyon. But just a few years ago, doctors said that would have never been possible. It feels like a miracle. Every day I get myself out of bed and do things that most people with the same injury can't do. In 2018, just three months into dating, Drake took a dive into Sydney's pool, 
changing his life forever, explaining back then. When I hit the bottom, I just immediately knew I was paralyzed. I dove back into the pool and I'm the one that grabbed him. Sydney held him until paramedics arrived and stayed long after anyone expected her to. Did you ever have people in high school even be like, well, it's just a high school girlfriend. You know, she's not going to stick around through this. Yes, I had so many people telling me like, y'all won't last, especially after the accident. They were like, if he can't move, you won't want to be with him. And I'm like, well, Drake in a wheelchair and Drake without a wheelchair. It's still Drake sitting there. Sydney helped push him through physical therapy in Maryland, saw his first steps on the field he once ran and cheered him on as he walked across the stage. I mean, ever since the beginning, she stuck right by me and she's still right there. Do you ever take a minute to sit back and think about how much has changed over the last few years? I do sometimes, but I'm on the go a lot. <laughs> I like to play golf, and hang out with my friends. Back to taking big swings with the person who's been through it all. We've had people come up to us and be like, y'all are so, like, y'all just look so familiar. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> this is our story. And after so many doctors said no, Drake got the most important yes. And a love story they once dreamed of, now one step closer to coming true. They're engaged. The night of Drake's accident, well, my dad woke up the next morning. He said, I had a dream that I was walking you down the aisle and Drake was standing at the end of it. That kind of like told me like, He's my person. I'm meant to be with him. Reporting in Little Rock, Sarah Horvakowitz for Wake Up Central. Drake and Sydney come back to Arkansas this week and say the next step is finding a place to live together. Still to come today at noon, Christmas is getting closer every day and you still have time to help local families celebrate the holiday. Scott? Live Radar continues to show a line of thunderstorms moving through western Arkansas, getting pretty close to the natural state. That's going to produce some strong, maybe even some severe weather this afternoon. I'm tracking the latest. I've got to look at the timing as well when THV 11 News at noon returns.